welcome believers all over the world. We are so glad you could join us, as it's always our privilege to encourage you in the Word of God. So like, share, and let everyone know we're on the air. brings forth transformation. So whenever you it's revealing to your mind who you are in God and who God is in you, then you will have a transformation of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and you will grab a hold to the word and say, wait a minute, there's greater in he that is in me than he that is in this world. And so therefore, I can have victory. I can't say devil, this means war. Now you need to understand one thing. Everything you need has already been provided. The enemy don't want you to see that. And I hear God saying, if you want it, Come and get it, because he provided everything you need in heaven. That's why Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Everything that you need has been provided. Oh, nudge your neighbor and say, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If you want God to turn your husband around, what you waiting for? Grab a hold to the horns of the other side of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every time I lay my hands on his head, you transform his mind. Welcome believers all over the world. This is Tim and Vicki and you are tuned in to Hear and Be Healed. Listen, I want to first thank everyone that contributed to the Forest Glory Christian Alliance uh, It Takes a Village Scholarship Fund. Listen, what a testimony. We were able to award five students $5,000. Did you hear what I said? Five students are going to be happy because they got $5,000. Now that awesome. might not seem like much. Yeah. No, but when you great. think about something about it that's given from an organization, and I'm talking about a grounds root organization, that's a lot of money. So the organization raised $25,000. And so, you know, some people are kind of skeptical. You say, well, you know, I don't know what you're giving into. Well, now you know, you've given, for those they gave, you've given to young people that will be awarded $5,000. Now, I'm going to be honest. That's a whole lot better than getting a Bible from your church. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. That's a whole lot better. Now, I'm not knocking the Bibles, but I'm just saying I believe we can do better if we believe better. And I'm quite sure that those children are going to be very proud to know that they've received five grand. And that ain't, that ain't no walk in the park. And so we thank God for Miss Jackie Foreman for her work and her hard work to keep that vision flowing that, you know, her and her husband started. And we just thank God for her. This is Think these things like they keep this woman young. This woman outruns us, <laughs> keeps us busy. As you know, yours truly, truly will be performing there as well. So if you're in the area, I'm, I'm sorry, the tickets are sold out. Can you believe that? Sold out. So uh, if you're trying to make up your mind to go, it's too late now. You know, all the seats are taken, the place is packed, and young people are going to be blessed. And we give God all the praise and all the glory. And let's just salute Ms. Foreman if she's in the house right now. Thank God for her work and her effort. God bless the works of her hand. As this, I'm quite sure she's smiling all the way in the Father's, you know, his, his arms, knowing that this work that she's done has uh, prospered and he's prospered it for her. Listen, let's go ahead and, and, and bless God and thank him for our offerings and our tithes and so we can move those things out the way because we want to get in the word as always, and teach the word of God so that the believers can be empowered to prosper. So, Father, we thank you for every seed that is sown in this ministry. It seems like there's probably somebody calling for prayer, uh, but we're just here to get them on the other end. One day, God's going to give us the prayer team and the prayer warriors to pray while we're on the air. So, Father, we just thank you right now for the seed that is sown. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you will bless them, O God, that gave and caused men to give unto their bosom, for the word declares, given and shall be given unto you, good measures pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure you given out, it shall be measured back to you again, in Jesus' name. Jesus. So we say, we yes. command this seed and this tithe, this offering to be sanctified, to go yes. forth and produce and to multiply and bring back a harvest for those that believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus and all the people of God say, Amen. 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 Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the year to come. And so I really want you to take these teachings as preparing you more so for walking in 2022 with a new mindset. And I want to say this here. You cannot change um, 
your image on the outside until you first change that image on the inside. And so what we've been doing is teaching all these teachings about manifesting a hundredfold to try you to, to, to get you to tra change the image on the inside. Uh, God had, watch this here, God had sowed a seed of the word into the children of Israel's heart saying, I have given you the land that's flowing with milk and honey, therefore you go in and possess it. That was the word that came out of God's mouth that went into Moses' mouth that was transferred to Aaron's mouth and Aaron declared and decreed it over the people. Mm -hmm. There is a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. You go in and possess it. Now, they didn't believe God, so they wanted to go see it out. They said, let's go, let's go, can, we, can we go check and see if God's telling the truth? So God said, okay, yeah, get your, get your, get your people together and go see uh, what it is. I hope that is. Well, you hear some strange noises here. Uh, <laughs> God forbid. Um, so they said, we want to go spy out the land. So he went and let them spy out the land and came back. The land was exactly like God said. Mm -hmm. I mean, though God's word is true. Yes, it if is. God said it, that settles it. It's the yes, truth. Lord. You can go check it out if you want to. God don't mind you proving him. But then at least when you prove him, you ought to say, okay, now I got some reasons to really go in and do the thing. Now, after they saw that God was not a liar, they came back with an evil report. And this is what they said. Listen to this very carefully. They said, we saw all the good land, but we saw all the obstacles, all the mm -hmm. problems called giants. Right. And we compared ourselves to them, and we saw ourselves, listen, as grasshoppers, and so we are in their eyesight. They don't know what them people thought, but they perceive within the image that they saw themselves that everybody perceived them that same way. Mm -hmm. That's, this is the problem. Even, even Paul tells us not to measure ourselves one with another. Right. You don't measure yourself with anybody. Whatever you're looking at, your problem, your situation, I'm dropping some good nuggets on you right now. You, you need to pay attention. N n compare, and don't compare yourself to your problem. Compare your problem to your God. And you'll mm -hmm. always find that God is bigger than your problem. God is bigger than anything that you go through. Somebody say, our God is bigger. Our God is bigger. Our God is bigger. So the idea is don't ever compare yourself, what you have, what you don't have, to your situation. Mm -hmm. Always compare your situation to God, and you'll find out that great is our God, and he always causes us to triumph. And so everything has to do with image. And until you see yourself the way God sees you on the inside, you'll never see yourself the way God sees you on the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what. Go to Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Because it's all based upon how you see yourself. We should never let anyone dictate to us who we are. I don't care who it is. Maybe you had someone that you really admired and they told you that you would never amount to anything. You're going to be just like so-and-so and so. Or, you know, things good have never happened for you. Now, that, those are seeds that they're sowing. Now, seeing that it's negative and contrary to what God say, I'm telling you, an enemy has sown that, and those are not really seeds, they're tares. Mm -hmm. You know, what, you know the word says, they say, whatever that was planted that wasn't planted of God, it was planted by who? The enemy. enemy. And yes. so when the man rose up, I, I can't go, I'm not going to go into the parable. His servants say, didn't, you, didn't we not sow good seed? Mm -hmm. uh, when, when come these tares? Right. And he says, what? An enemy has done this. Yes. And so everything that God speaks concerning you is always good. Thou art fearfully and wonderfully made. I know the yes. thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. These are the yes. things that God sows into your heart. And anything that's contrary to that is, is the enemy sowing tares. Mm -hmm. So you're going to receive seeds of wheat or, or uh, seeds of tares. You have to make up your mind what you're going to do. Now, the idea is you just focus on what God says and just ignore what the enemy says. Anything that you hear that you don't agree with or you don't like, you don't have to receive it. Mm -hmm. What did the book say? He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue or word that rises against you, you shall condemn. what condemn it. Yes. So anything that you don't like coming towards you, you're going to have to condemn it. Now, all this takes place in what we're calling tonight the teaching, preparing the soil, soil preparation. Because if we're going to talk about receiving a hundredfold, we already established the fact that the hundredfold must um, deal with good soil. And we say we're going for the hundredfold, not mm -hmm. the 30, not the 60, but the hundredfold. We've yes. done, we've, we, we're going to go back and talk about it because we got to get this in you because the idea is knowing what not to be, what not to have, not the right. wayside, not the thorny, not the so, uh, stony ground. 
but the, the good ground. Matter of fact, I was reading uh, in Jeremiah 4 and 3 what God says, and ye, O Israel, break up the fallow ground. And this is what he said also. And don't sow in the ta on the thorns. Mm -hmm. Break up the fallow ground and don't sow among the thorns. So all this teaching we've been doing is been preparing the soil, breaking up the fallow ground, commanding you, commanding and declaring and decreeing to you, don't be way by the wayside where you hear something, don't understand it, and the enemy comes immediately. Don't be, don't let your heart be thorny where you just let the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word out and you become unfruitful. Don't be stoned the ground where you hear it and you are, you know, you receive it with joy, but as soon as persecution comes for the word's sake, you know, you can't stand on the word of God's, you know, you believe in God for your healing, you believe in God for prosperity, and then somebody come along and say, oh, you listen to them prosperity preachers, or you listen to people that are just getting over you, God, and it's not God, well, we are to heal everybody. And so you listen to all those things that come against the word of God and you eat it up and you, and, and what? The word that, that God sowed in your heart, mm -hmm. they uproot it, mm -hmm. pluck it out, and then it becomes unfruitful. Listen, we've established the fact that God's word is forever settled in heaven. And that's what we put our, uh, our belief, our, we stake our claim and we build our foundation upon the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. I'm not moved by what other people say. I, it's not for my. It's not my job to understand what the word says. It's my job to believe what the word says. I don't know how God makes it rain. I don't know how God makes the flower bloom. But I, one thing I do know, He does it. And as long as He do it, that's all I need to know. They they didn't have to try to figure out how God rained manna from heaven. No, no, no. Just eat the manna. Mm -hmm. Eat the manna. Do like God say. Go and Amen. pick it and eat it. And then yes. just be satisfied, enter into the rest of God. That's the, that's the whole thing about believing the word of God, that you enter into the rest. God said it, it's established, I believe it and receive it, and therefore it is manifested unto me, and I don't have to labor so hard for to receive it. Mm -hmm. It's already been prepared. Everything we need is already prepared, has already been established, but we receive those things, how? By faith. By faith. Yes. By faith. So now let's look at Romans 12 and 2. Listen to what it says. And be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The first thing he says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't let the world shape you. Don't let what people say shape you. You know, the majority of, especially the church, let the world dictate to them. You know, you, you, you got these celebrities, they got jets, they got mansions, they got nice cars, but they'll tell the Christian, you're not supposed to have that. The devil is a lie. Right. The devil is a lie. My God owns everything. The mm -hmm. earth is the Lord in the fullness mm -hmm. thereof. And so therefore, if my father have it in Christ my Savior, my elder brother said it's my father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom, why would I even just resist God and knowing that he wants to do me good? Mm -hmm. Why? It doesn't make any sense. But we have believed the lie of the leaven that the world is trying to form us. The church should be poor. The church should be broke. And we gobbled it up and we walking around. But don't, 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 don't complain in your secret closet. Don't complain about you ain't got nothing. Don't complain about God not coming to visit you if you can't declare and decree it in the face of your adversary. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before me and I'll be ashamed of you before my father. And I'm telling you the same thing. You be in the closet crying about you being not healed. You not having any money to pay your bills and can't, can't, can't feed your children. You know, don't have you know, money. I would just like to go on a vacation. See, don't talk all that stuff in your secret closet and then come out and act all sanctimonious. And say, all I need is King Jesus. <laughs> that doesn't work. The yeah. idea is you can have King Jesus and all those things. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. God is not trying to withhold anything. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand why the saints of God don't believe that they can have Jesus and, and, and the things that God wants to give to us. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me very carefully. The devil lied to, some, to a lot of us because he got mm -hmm. us thinking all we got to look forward to is heaven. I just want to make it to heaven. I'm sorry, baby love, but, but he, you're not, you're not going to stay in heaven. Heaven mm -hmm. is only a holding place until God comes back and create a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get no wings. I don't. I love the wings, brother, but you ain't going to get no wings. I'm sorry. You're not going to get a halo. I'm sorry. You're not going to be sitting on a puffy cow playing no, no harp. It's not going to happen. That is not biblical. Mm -hmm. God is going to create a new heaven and the earth. Now, if you die before these things are established, you go into a holding place called paradise. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You can call that heaven, but it's just a holding place until Jesus come back and conquer death, hell, and the grave, mm -hmm. establish a new kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven on earth, creating a new heaven and a new earth. The earth is going to come down, be reestablished, and then we're going to all come down, and this is where we're going to live, you know, all those things. But just thinking we're going to go to heaven and just, you know, it's going to be happy days all over again. We're going to be, you know, throwing harps around and playing harps. That is not biblical. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus never really talked about us going to heaven. He talked about having our names in the Lamb's book of life. He always talked about eternal life. Mm -hmm. Okay, watch this here. When his disciples came back rejoicing about the devils that were under their control and obeying them, Jesus said, don't rejoice because the enemy is subject to you, but rejoice why? Because your name is written. Your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Your name is written in heaven. He didn't say because you're going to heaven. He says because your name is written because you're going to be one of the ones that's going to have the opportunity to be part of the new earth here on the new earth that's going to be created and established by him. Matter of fact, Jesus said this way, right. you, you do err not knowing the scriptures. Right. There ain't going to be no marrying. There ain't going to be no heart pain. There ain't going to be none of that stuff. They need to marry or give it in marriage. You're going to be like God created you. He says, as an angel. No, no, no. We're not going to have wings. I'm sorry. So get that out your mind. Stop. Stop. Let's, 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 let's move the fairy tales out of the way. And we need to stop teaching that stuff. Get, get this book and teach what this book say. Mm -hmm. You're... Matter of fact, matter of fact, we are not even the bride. I don't know where that came from either. We're not the bride. The New Jerusalem is the bride. We are the garments that's going to be around that. See, see, it, it, it's, I agree with Bill. It is poor leadership. The world is dictating to the church, and the church is in the trouble that is in. This is what he said. He says, the world is in trouble because of the church, and the church is in trouble because of leadership. We're teaching all kinds of crazy stuff that doesn't make sense. It's not even the Bible. And you know, oh, we're the bride of Christ. It's not in the book. The, the bride of Christ is the New Jerusalem. Go read Re uh, Revelation. And it says the, 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 the New Jerusalem shall be clothed with the garments of the saints. We are the saints that's going to clothe the Jerusalem. Now, we are the body of Christ. So there's a lot of things that we just got to go back and read our book. Mm -hmm. We're not reading our Bible. And we're hearing fairy tales being matriculated down from this elder to that elder, and we just pick that stuff up and we teach it and we run with it. I don't teach nothing unless I look at his book first. It's something, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. None of the book says he's the way, the truth, and the life. You got people that are ignorant and unlearned. They had a good zeal for God, but they were ignorant and unlearned. And they were saying things that really weren't in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we ran with it. And all that, that, that howling and hooping and stuff like that. That's how that stuff got in the church. Because we had, and then I'm not being, I'm not, I'm not being evil. The idea is people hooping, but they didn't know what they was hooping about, and it was just teaching a lot of wrong things. It's not in the Bible. And so we become so illiterate concerning the things of the kingdom, we are getting destroyed by the adversary. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about going into the new year, 2022, and we're talking about um, manifesting the hundredfold, all this is based upon kingdom principles, how we're to operate. I really do believe that God wants us to get back to the place where we believe him to be a God of miracles. Mm -hmm. Not what we can do in our own strength. Yeah, anybody can go get a job, get a degree, and work like a slave, get two or three jobs, and make their ends meet and make it. That's what the world doing. But I really believe God wants us to get back to believing him to be mm -hmm. a miraculous God that, hey, if you don't have a job, God still supplies your need. We're talking about the God that calls oil to multiply supernaturally so it will be a source of means that the woman of the woman of God that could go and sell what she have pay off her debts and create a retirement that would sustain her for the rest of her life not just her but her and her sons mm -hmm. or the widow woman that was about to give up and die said I'm about to pick my last cake I'm going to eat it me and my son and we're going to die but here comes God somebody say Jesus save the day Jesus save the God day. came in and said thus mm -hmm. said the Lord woman of God mm -hmm. you be obedient to this seed I'm about to sow into mm -hmm. your life and sow into your heart if you receive this believe the Lord thy God you shall be established believe his prophet now and you're going to prosper mm -hmm. thus mm -hmm. said the Lord make me a cake first for I declare and decree unto you your cruise of war shall not fail neither shall your meal barrel come to an end that woman say I I believe I heard from God. Come on, somebody say, I believe I heard I from believe God. I heard when you from hear God. a word that just quickens yes, in your spirit Lord. and shakes you and wake it, awakens in you, you say, I, I believe I heard from God. I, I believe I heard from God. 
especially when it's a word concerning the very thing that you need answers to. Jesus Christ came preaching solutions. You had those that had leprosy. You had those that had issues of blood. You had those that were blind, those that were deaf, dumb, full of devils. Jesus said, good news. Today, I'm about to fulfill a scripture in your ears. For God has anointed me with the Holy Ghost and power. And I am anointed to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. And, and set at liberty them that are bruised. I'm here to preach the gospel to the poor, telling you I got a solution to your poverty. It is called the word of God. And I'm telling you, you seek the kingdom and all the things that you need. You don't have to worry about them. God's going to add them unto you. I am talking about the God of miracles who desires looking to and fro. This is what the book says. Now, don't, don't, don't take my word for it. Read the Bible. It says God is looking for the opportunity to show himself strong on the behalf of those that will believe him whose heart is perfect toward him. In other words, he's looking for people that are just looking for a God of miracles. I'm not talking about a God, Lord, just help me to hold out. No, I don't want you to help me to hold out. I want you to cause me to overcome. Okay. Amen. Yes. To get the victory. Mm -hmm. Sweatless victory. It wasn't just enough for uh, 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 the David to overcome. He said, Lord, shall I go after the enemy? Shall I overtake them? It wasn't enough just to find them. I want to overtake them. I want to win. I want, to, I want, I want the victory. Yes. It causes us to overcome, triumph. Mm -hmm. This is the God that we serve. Not just, not just religion, going to a church and finding a nice pastor and a nice choir and say we've done our religious Christian duty. No, God wants to come in and impact your life, that your life will shine and that he'll do such a good thing in your life that other people say, man, I know where you come from. And it, that was nobody but God. Right. I, you, 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 listen, listen, don't be afraid what people say. You ought to want to walk with God so much that people look at you and think you're a drug dealer. This is not what I'm saying. <laughs> I know she ain't got no job. How, mm -hmm. how is she driving that? How is she living? How is she... And, and she's always mm -hmm. dressing nice. And I know, right. she told me she lost her job. Mm -hmm. How is this even possible? Right. She, girl, you know, I believe she's dealing drugs. See, <laughs> be persecuted for righteousness mm -hmm. sake. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to be nice. <laughs> yeah. I kind of got, got, got stuck in my own words there. My son was telling me about this guy he's still in our neighborhood. And he looks like a normal, average Joe with dreadlocks. Guy got nice cars, Maserati sitting in the thing. And then, you know, the flesh was saying, he must be doing drugs. God just blesses his people. Mm -hmm. You just have to find out how to tap in so he can bless you. Right. I'm telling you. And so you want to live a life where people talk about you and persecute you for righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. And so that the door open up, they'll finally be nosy enough to say, I, I, I'm sorry, you got to forgive me. I just got to ask. How you do? It's a guy, that, I don't know if he on <laughs> he, in, he, TikTok or Instagram, but he goes around the nice house and says, hey, I see you got a nice house. Can I ask you, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. And he just asks them. And they begin to tell him what he, they do for a living. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, let me and see your good works and glorify your God. Now, you think about that. Why would they want to glorify God? When they see what you have and what God is doing for you. Right. I'm telling you, people want to know, hey, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When Nebuchadnezzar saw that God delivered them. He said, there ain't no God like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he defied anybody else that would compare that God, their God, to them. He said, hey, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that, that'd be the God. Mm -hmm. So my thing is when God <laughs> manifests things in our lives, it gets the world's attention. Uh, like Bill said, the world, the world should be feeling sorry for us. Mm -hmm. They should be wanting to be like us. Right. When Jesus came, watch this. Folks was trying to rush into the kingdom. Why? Because he was manifesting. Yes. My God. People was violently taking the kingdom by force. Now they violently running away from the church. Running away from the kingdom. Why, 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 why are people running away from the church? Why, why is there a great exodus? Because there is a lack of the teaching on the kingdom. We're talking about everything mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the kingdom. We're not teaching people to overcome. We're not teaching people to get the victory. We're not teaching people to win. And people are just saying, that I don't want. Uh, 
It's in everybody's heart. I don't care who you are, to win. Right. Everybody wants to win. I am sorry. People want to win. Mm -hmm. If you do not want to win, you are not created by God. God likes winning. I'm sorry. Jesus likes winning. Yes. People that are born again likes winning. Paul said, when you run a race, what? Run, run to, to win. win. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you got to have a winning mentality. And so going back to don't being conformed to this word, don't let the world conform you and shape you. The world shouldn't be telling the church how to act, what to drive, what to eat, what you can have, what you can't have. The devil is a lie. And it just, just, just bothers me. You got people like, I'm sorry to call her name, but I'm going to call her. You know her. I'm just going to say, oh, sitting around, got jets, nice house, giving cars away, and then have the audacity to judge a preacher for having one. Ain't nobody said nothing about yours. So what gives you the right to judge the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God. So the idea is church, don't let the world dictate to you and conform, try to conform you to be poverty minded. Mm -hmm. That's not, you can't do anything for anybody with a poverty mentality. And I, and, and, and I share always with, if you, if you believe you're going to sin, if you get it, get it and give it away. How many people you can bless? How many people you can bless? It's Christmas time. Think about how many families don't have food, clothing, mm -hmm. or even toys. Yeah. That if God blessed you and you would walk in the blessings of Abraham, you would have the necessities to give. You would have the, 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 the substance to give to them that don't have and make somebody have a joyous Christmas. But if you got the mentality, well, I, don't, I don't need all that. You, not, you, you we, are, we are worthless. Mm -hmm. We're not good for anything. Right. And I'm telling you, Jesus is going to judge us. He says, when I come back, and I'm going to ask you, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. Well, Lord, I ain't had no money. Who thought was that? The kingdom was, out. The kingdom was being preached. The kingdom was being preached. Mm -hmm. Your problem was you was not listening. You were not trying to get anything. You was either wayside, stony, or thorny. And when the man of God was preaching the kingdom to you, I commanded you to be good soil, to bring forth much fruit, that my Father may be glorified. But you resisted the Holy Ghost and said, I don't need that. You had other things on your mind. And see, we take the easy way out. It's easy to be lazy and stay at home and say, I don't need all that. Why? Because you know if you get it, it's going to put a demand on your time, a demand mm -hmm. on your ability. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to get up and do something. And so the idea is we want to receive the kingdom that we can produce much fruit so that we can be a blessing to us. And I always have to deal with preparing the good soil breaking up the fallow ground, right. getting the heart where it perceives the word. Now, I'm going to jump to two things to tell you how you can prepare your soul. Let me give you just two scriptures, plenty of scriptures, how you can prepare your soul. But I want to give you just two the Holy Spirit gave to me. The first one is in Philipp, Philippians 4 and 8. Listen to what Paul says. He, he, he tells us about asking God for something. He says, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious uh, for anything. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And then he goes on to tell us how we should prepare our hearts so that what we ask for, we can receive it. So I want you to listen to this scripture, Philippians 4 and 8. Listen to what it says. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, mm. and if there be any praise, Come on. think on these things. Paul says, allow these things to what? Create an image in you. Yes. So the idea is, he says, pull out all those things that are negative. Now think about it. He says, our weapons are not corner, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All those negative things that the world tried to conform us, the enemy tried to conform us, those thoughts, those strongholds, to pull them down and then reestablish yourself in the word of God. Reestablish yourself in the promises of God. Reestablish yourself in the commandments of God. And then he says, all those things that God says do, they're going to be pure. They're going to be lovely. They're going to be of a good report. Think on these things. Because Paul is trying to rebuild your image. 
You've got to see yourself the way God sees you. You've got to see yourself as lovely. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God says we are the apple of his eyes. We've got to reestablish re our image on the inside of who God says we are. Stop looking at the mirror and look at what you see. Paul says it does not yet appear, or did John say, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. Him. Mm -hmm. So the idea we look to Christ, who is lovely, who is of a, who is honest, who is of a good report, mm -hmm. look to Him and says, "I am going to be conformed into the very image of Christ." Wow. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it would not Robert to be equal with God, but mm -hmm. made of himself no reputation. Right. You don't have to be arrogant. Mm -hmm. You just have to be confident in who you are and who you have become and who you are becoming. The Bible says we ought to be renewed what day by day, yes. renewed. It said, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. And how do we renew the inward man? Through the word of God. What does God's word say? And you possess that. Say, hey, what the Bible says about right. me is for me. I can do what the Bible says. I can become what the Bible says I can become, and I can do what the Bible says I can do. So if yes. he says I'm more than a conqueror, then I'm more than a conqueror. Now, to see myself as a conqueror, I might have to change a whole lot of things because right. I'm shy, I'm timid, I'm ugly, I'm poor, I don't know what to do. Gideon thought those same things, and God said, no, 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 listen. Go down there and see what your enemies are saying about you. Yes. yes. And just seeing that restored some hope in Gideon because it changed his image. And instead of seeing himself as a loser, he heard them mean called him a mighty warrior and a conqueror. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, that's what I am? Yes. That's what you are. Amen. You are more than a conqueror. Amen. You are the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to ask you, Whose report are you going to believe? You get up in the morning and you dog yourself out. You look at all the failures or so-called failures. Listen, stop looking at things you didn't accomplish as failures. Look at them as things that don't work that way. They should motivate you to keep on striving because guess what? Yes. For each attempt that you fail, you're getting just that closer to winning. Did mm -hmm. you hear what I said? Yes. For each attempt that you fail, you're getting just that close to winning. And you know, you just maybe three steps away from break from a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Three steps. Why would you quit? Thank you, Jesus. You've come this far. You've been believing God for two years. Mm -hmm. Why give up in two months? You come this far. Why quit now? So my thing is just keep on believing God, whatever the word says. And when you've done all the stand, do what? Stand mm -hmm. there for. Keep standing. Keep believing. Do not let the enemy Take the integrity of the word of God out of your mouth and out of your heart. Your heart is good ground. Sometimes it takes a while for certain things to grow because we keep playing with the soil. Let the soil settle. Make sure it is conducive for growth and allow the word of God to grow. Because guess what? He talks about the seed in the soil. He said the seed bring it forth. It knows how to do it. And the seed knows what to do. So the soil and the seed knows what to do. So if your heart is prepared correctly, mm -hmm. it knows what to do with the Word of God. Trust me, your, your, your heart knows what to do with the Word of God if it's prepared to receive the Word of God and conducive. So Paul says one of the ways you can make your heart conducive is by changing your image, by thinking on the right things. What's some of the things are lovely? What's some of the things are good? What's some of the things are just? What's some of the things are good report? There being a virtue, there being a praise. Think on these things. He's yes. telling us, stop thinking about things of, of, of the past. Stop thinking about your shortcomings, what you can't do. Now, you better hear this. The world is catching on to the things of God. They are stumbling up on them. Even though it's been hid from them, they are stumbling up on them. And they are using science, uh, quantum physics, to find out the mysteries of the kingdom that God has hidden for the believers. Mm -hmm. The only problem is they are doing it without God. And they're calling it something else. Oh, it's the God of the universe. Man, God created the universe. It's God. Mm -hmm. But they're taking and they're doing all the things that work in all the principles and all the laws that's in the Bible. The only sad thing is they're going to bust hell wide open because they're trying to do it without God and they're calling it science. <laughs> it's sad that they think that what they're discovering <laughs> is what they discovered, not knowing that God created and established all those things and all they're doing is, just, is, is being revealed to them what God has done, mm -hmm. the law of gravity. Newton, Sir Isaac Newton did not discover uh, 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 gravity. God created it. <laughs> There's no discovery. Just like, a, like, just like uh, Columbus thought he discovered America. 
Uh, dear, how are you going to discover something that somebody's already here? Excuse me, you're in, you, you, you're in the deceit. And so the idea is that you got the world now that is beginning to explain the Bible and walking in the principles of God while the church is sitting back saying, hmm, that sounds like new age. No, it's it. you see, you're thinking it because they're discovering it. And when we should, when God is hidden it for us mm -hmm. to operate. When, listen, to what, listen to what Jesus said. Hear me. He says, if you have faith and you speak to that mountain, and you command that mountain to move and be plucked up and cast into the sea and don't doubt in your heart. You shall have what you say. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense to a believer who has not been taught the kingdom of God and understand the principles of God and understand how the kingdom works. It don't compute. And so when you have the world that says, I just think about manifestation. I just believe I'm going to be successful. I just believe I'm going to be a millionaire. And they begin to see it and they think it and they believe it with all their heart. They begin to write checks, blank checks in their wallets. And they say, I, one day I'm going to write a million dollars. Listen to what I'm saying to you, church. Mm -hmm. They say, one day I'm going to write a million dollars. I remember uh, Jim Carrey. He said he kept a, hundred, a million dollar check in his wallet. He says, one day I'm going to write somebody a million dollar check. And he said he kept it in his wallet for years in his wallet mm -hmm. for years. Now, Jim ain't discovered nothing. Mm -hmm. All he has done is operated in the principles that Jesus is trying to teach the church. And we resisted and rejected because we're trying to figure it out with our logical mind. So I'm going to ask you the question. What did Jesus mean when he said that? Tell me. For all of you out there with so much wisdom and you know God and you're just ready to go to heaven and what I'm teaching is blasphemous. Tell me what did Jesus mean? No, the tree was a real tree. The tree was a real fig tree that got withered up that mm -hmm. Jesus talked to. Church, please right. listen to me. We're letting the world rob us and the enemy is so and so much leaven that we're not believing anything. We still serve the God of miracles. It's time to get back to believing that we have a God that, that you can't explain it. Yes. Yeah, the children. Do you believe that the children of Israel walked on dry land between the two yeah. walls of the Red Sea on each side? Yeah. Do you believe he brought water from a, from, from a rock? Mm -hmm. Well, why is it so hard for you to believe the things of the kingdom that Jesus taught? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and multiplied those and fed yes, 5,000? Thank you, Lord. Yes. Well, then why is it so hard for us to understand the principles of the kingdom and manifest in the hundredfold? See, that's what James is saying. He said, you got to, you got to get that double-mindedness out and stop wavering. You either believe this thing or you don't. And so we're letting the world use and give credit to quantum physics and science when these things have been taught by God, and them people are manifesting stuff. Yes, they are. Why? Because it's a principle that they know that it's working, and they believe it. Mm -hmm. If the church would believe the word of God, we will see some things turned around. Why do you think the enemy is fighting the church so hard to say that what this what what Jesus is teaching uh, didn't mean? It's so easy to talk about seeing because we can it, it, we waste time talking about sin, ba being baptized in Jesus' name and water. Paul say those things are baby stuff. We should be going on to perfection. We should be understanding how to move mountains. How to heal diseases that the doctors can't do. Those are the things we should be majoring in, but we majoring in the minors. Oh, just live right. Well, listen here. If we keep on just struggling and wrestling with what living right, we're not going to ever get it. And there comes a time we just got to get it together, live right, and focus on something. But I'm going to tell you why the church is in so much sin. Because we keep matriculating and we just keep rehearsing and we keep saying it. And that's all you can ever think about. Sin, 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 sin. That's all you have to think about. Listen, get delivered, get saved, and get in this kingdom and understand how to be a blessing to your neighbor. Be a blessing to your enemy. Save the loss. Yes. How do we do that? By operating the kingdom. In other words, power being demonstrated and manifested when we talk about what Jesus has come to do. Going about doing good, healing all them that are sick and oppressed of the devil. Receiving every bountiful blessing that God says we're to have. Yes, believe, the, believe it. Believe this. 
that you can walk in divine health. Mm -hmm. If God can keep the children of Israel for 40 years, except those that were destroyed based upon his word, but the other ones that were going to, that have been said to go into the, the promised land, the Bible said it was not one feeble among them. Not only did they not get sick, they did not get weak or weary. God's anointing on them was so miraculously powerful that it kept their shoe. Good God Almighty. Yes, Lord. The glory that God had put up on them was so glorious that it kept their clothes. The threads didn't wear out. The clothes did not wear out. The, the, the threading the, in the lining is kept strong. I'm talking about you talking about walking around in the wilderness for 40 years with the same pair of shoes. Come on now, we're talking about a miraculous God. Do yes. not forget the God that we serve and we believe in. And then when we talk about the kingdom, you're looking at me like a deer in a headlight. Not believing this here. Baby, we serve the God of the miraculous. miraculous. You are not serving a weak, anemic God that cannot flex his muscles and bear his might and deliver his people. You're talking about a God almighty that created heaven and earth. And I'm telling you, if he is able to do all those things, what can he not do for you? Yes. What can he not do for you? My God, you ought to be so excited about God. Your faith ought to be stirred up to heights unknown. You ought to be saying, hey, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. Great is my God and greater to be praised. And if I got God, I can do all things. All things are possible with him. So I got to change my image. First of all, I got to change how I see God. And I got to change how I see myself seeing God. I got to see myself that God is my help. God is my strength. God is my fortress. God is my shield. God is my buckler. Oh, he's my all and all. He's my El Shaddai, my Jehovah Jireh, my Jehovah Rapha, my Jehovah Sinkanu. He's everything. He is what? I am to me. And why should I be going around worrying? Why should I be complaining? Why should I be murmuring? I'm going to tell you why we do those things. Because we don't believe that he is God and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Now, I want to say this here. Do not let me say what I'm saying to you, make you feel, make you feel like, oh, I just don't have anything. When we're teaching these things, we're not teaching you, listen, we're not teaching this word to cast a stumbling block before you. We're teaching this word to make it a stepping stone for you. Yes. Don't see it as a stumbling block. See it as a stepping stone. That's, that's, that's what I'm missing. I, don't, I need that. I, I, I need that. That's where I've been missing it at. I have, my faith has been wavering in God. My image has been distorted. I'm not seeing God the way the Bible says I should see God. And so if I can't see God to be my deliverer, I can't see him bringing me in. Three million of the children of Israel listened to a lie that was told, told by ten leaders. Listen to me carefully. Anytime the church goes in, 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 the, in the wrong way, it's all about because of leadership. Right. Ten leaders came back and said, Y'all lost your mind. We can't do it. Mm -hmm. And here's Joshua and Caleb saying, but God, but God, but God, magnifying God, but magnifying God. Them people ain't heard a word they were saying. Wayside, thorny, stony. And they were trying to sow the seed that God, if God delight in us, if God delight, in, if God be for us. And they didn't hear anything. They wanted to stone them. They just murmuring and complaining. And they believe that a lie that the 10 preachers said, that like we're believing a lot of lies that the 10 preachers are saying, God doesn't want you prosperous. God doesn't heal everybody. And we're listening to all that stuff. And then we're wondering, well, God, why, why doesn't God heal everybody? Because don't heal everybody because the majority believe that he don't. Mm -hmm. And where there is no faith, there will not be a result. We cannot enter into the promised land. We cannot enter into rest. Paul said this here, let us be fearful unless there comes upon us that evil heart of unbelief mm -hmm. that we don't enter into the promises. We don't enter into the blessings. We don't enter into the rest that God has prepared for us. And we can't enter in if we keep believing what people say. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, what was going on is we start teaching other things that can be pseudo-soothing pseudo uh, psychology and just motivate people for the moment. God ain't into no motivation. God is into manifestation. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it very slowly. God is not into motivation. That's man. That's the world. God is into manifestation. When God said he was going to do something, he, he, he wasn't saying that to make the people feel good. That would a woman didn't want to feel good. Man, God said, hey, listen, you ain't got the word. 
Just think positive thoughts. Just believe that God's going to be there for you. He's going to be there with me. Oh, hold up, man of God. Just time out. Did you hear what I said? These people coming to get my boys. Oh, baby, just think positive thoughts. Just think, Lord, I thank you that they shall not take my children. Lord, no, you, you see, you, you, you ain't hearing what I'm saying. Man, these folk coming to get my cheerings. Mm -hmm. Now, what you going to do? <laughs> that man had, had, had an answer. God was not into motivating them. He was into manifestation. So he says, this is what you do. And he honored the man of God's words. He says, you go in there and what you got, take what you got. So everybody talking about what they ain't got. They ain't got this, they ain't got that. Man, I said, you got to have something. You got to have something to show God you got some skin in the game. You got to have something that God say that I can say that you got some vested interest in this thing. So a lot of people want a lot of things from God, but they want to do nothing. Mm -hmm. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Well, are you, playing, pray, are you praying? Are you doing anything? Are you commit, uh, doing the commandments of God? Well, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm get there when, I, when, when God bless me. It ain't going to happen. You're going to have to show God that you got some vested interest in the things of the kingdom. Now, what did we say? How do you get the hundredfold? For Jesus' sake and the gospel's sake. It's got to be those things. If what you're doing ain't got nothing to do with God, why should he bless you? Oh, I'm believing God to make me a millionaire. Why? For what? Mm -hmm. Right. So you can heap it up on yourself? It is never going to happen. Read yes. James. You just yeah. greedy. Mm -hmm. And you're evil. You got an evil heart. All right. you're thinking about is yourself and it's being selfish. But when you say, no, this is going to be for the kingdom. Say, what I'm going to do is going to be for the kingdom. So it's going to be to bless the kingdom and give my Jesus glory. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, that, that, I, I can work with that. Because... I can invest in what invests in me. God wants to invest in that which invests in him. Mm -hmm. If what you're asking God for has nothing to do with the kingdom, sorry, baby. You might well be like the world and believe for the universe to give it to you. <laughs> and you might get it, but you won't get heaven <laughs> to go with it. So we got to do this thing the right way. So not be conformed. Another way to prepare your heart uh, is in Psalm 66, 18. Now listen to this. This is very important here. This is what David said in Psalm 66, 18. Here's what a lot of things that have to be just plucked up out that heart. Psalm 66 and 18. I told the first lady I was going to put on the roll. I wasn't going to give her scriptures beforehand. She just got to go mm -hmm. to him as I'm led by the Spirit. So what does it say in Psalm 66 and 18? You can write it down. Psalm 66 and 18. If I regard, regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. Did you hear that? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. There's a lot of things that we, that God, the Holy Ghost will be bringing to our attention. We just ignore it. Mm -hmm. Jesus commanded us to love our enemy. Right. All that stuff we be saying is not the word of God. I'm going to love them with a, from, with a long handled spoon. That's not Bible. Matter of fact, he said, do good to them. Mm -hmm. So, so let's stop seeing all these foolish right. things that's keeping us in trap because it ain't cute. Right. I'm sorry. It's not cute. <laughs> You know, the Lord say love them, but I ain't got to like them. That ain't in the Bible. Stop mm -hmm. saying those things. Just do what the Lord say do. Get to the place mm -hmm. where you're not a, a person that walks in offense. You walk Amen. in love. And you walk Lord. in love with integrity, with a sense of knowing that God compels you to have compassion, that you are moved with compassion, that when you see your enemy, when you listen, watch this, watch this, watch this. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody you know don't like you, that the compassion of God moves you to do that which is good. Yes. Jesus said, overcome evil with what? Good. good. Do yes. good to them to despitefully use you. Mm -hmm. you people, yes. you, they do not take your life, you lay it down. Yeah. And so when you walk around and you have those things in your heart, God and the Holy Ghost is trying to massage your heart, mm -hmm. trying to make it smooth and pliable and relaxed, and you just steady saying, mm -mm, I don't <laughs> trust them. <laughs> Trust has nothing to do with doing good. Right. Well, if I do good, they're going to think I like them. Ain't got nothing to do with what they think is what God knows and you know. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that people don't take from you. People are not taking advantage of you. Mm -hmm. You got to look at it that way. I ain't giving them another dime. Mm -hmm. They are not going to get in their head that they're taking advantage of me. They're not taking advantage of you. You're just doing what the books say do. And if you keep acting like that, you're regarding iniquity in your heart, and your heart is not conducive for the word of God to mm -hmm. manifest. And God says, if you resist my word, this word I'm trying to tell you, then why would I even sow any word in your heart that you that you're going to walk in because you're not going to do it. And that's what Jesus said when he says, when you stand praying, what? Forgive. 
that your heavenly father may forgive you. And that forgiveness is not just for, to forgive you from doing your wrong, but the idea of putting you in a place, in a posture where everything that flows in your life works. Mm -hmm. Every promise of God works. So when God sees that they're stagnant in your heart because there's bitterness, envy, strife, unforgiveness, and you know what? I'm not being insensitive. The things people have done to you may have destroyed you, just practically just tore you down. Mm -hmm. But here's the power in that. Where they tore you down, Jesus is a heal, healer of, and mender of broken hearts. Right. And he can restore you. He says, I come to what? Heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. So you throw that thing over on the Jesus, casting all your cares over onto him because he cares for you. And you release those people that hurt you because they are not worth you not manifesting the hundredfold. If your children broke your heart, somebody need to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> if your children broke your heart, mm -hmm. let them go. If your job broke your heart, you gave everything you possibly can give. You there 24-7 when everybody was coming in late. You was coming in early. When everybody left early, you was coming in late. I mean, staying late. All those things that you were doing and that job got rid of you, they, you should have been the last person to get rid of. And it broke your heart. Listen, mm -hmm. release it and let it go. Because if you hold all those things and harbor them in your heart, then your heart's not going to be open to receive the things, the new things that God has for you. And I'm telling you, we're getting ready to go into the new year, 2022. And you can't go in with all that garbage and that baggage and your heart is not conducive or so fallow that God can't speak to your heart and bring things, new things to you. He says, behold, I do all, right. thing, to do all things new. And God wants to do a new thing in your, your life for this new year that's coming up. And you got to be prepared. And you got to receive this word that we're, we're teaching you so that you can be ready for the new year. Mm -hmm. So preparing your soul to be conducive to receive the word of God. Because I'm telling you, God can't do anything with a heart that is contrary to what he says. Right. And I'm telling you, if you really want to get your heart to that place, learn how to love like God loved. When you can look at somebody and say, mm -hmm. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right. And not say it because it's just a cliche saying that mm -hmm. you're saying because Jesus said and Stephen said, but mm -hmm. God moves you with compassion to say it and you mean it. Yes. Where you feel, look at somebody and you feel godly sorrowful for them and it's not hard for you to right. do the good. Listen, if it's hard for you to bless a person, whether it's your enemy or not, then you, you're not there yet. The idea is it's supposed to be second nature to bless somebody. Mm -hmm. There were some times I would lose members in the church, good members, because they couldn't understand why I was doing good to people that they knew were talking about me like a dog. Why would you help them? They, they don't even like you. It's not the <laughs> fact that they like me. It's the fact that I love God and I obey his commandments. And so I'm sorry they asked me before you did, and so therefore I'm obligated to keep my word concerning them, regardless of whether they like me or not, because they don't have anything to do with the kingdom that I'm walking mm -hmm. in. The kingdom, I possess the kingdom. The kingdom is within me, not in them. And so for me to continue to, let, to allow the kingdom to operate in me, I abide by the principles of the kingdom as a citizen. Right. And so therefore, as long as Amen. I abide, as long as I'm a law-abiding citizen in the kingdom, the kingdom would work for me, regardless of whether they like me, dislike me or not, because they are not going to conform me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been renewed and transformed by the renewing of my mind. I understand that they can't stop me. Mm -hmm. Whether they don't like me, trying to backstab right. me, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. you, you, nobody can stop you except you. They can, listen, they can lie, they can cheat. Look at, look at what happened to Joseph. Potiphar's wife lied. Mm -hmm. Right. Look at, the, look at the, 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 the cupbearer. He forgot about Joseph. Mm -hmm. you know? All those things. These brothers despised him, tried to kill him. Sorry. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Whatever God says concerning you, yes. the only one that can stop it is you. Because God said his word will not return unto him void. The only way that word does not work is when you fall out of alignment with it and agreement with it and you don't walk in it that it may be manifested. So if the Lord says he's going to prosper you, if you get to the point where I don't believe this prosperity stuff, I'm, I'm just tired of giving it. Okay, sit down, guess what? You've just rooted up every seed that you've sown, and it's as mm -hmm. if you've never sowed anything, and the harvest never comes. Wow. And That's you know right. what? The word becomes unfruitful. Mm 
-hmm. That's just like, it, it, I mean, this is like in the natural. If you went out there and you got tired of the, 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 the wheat growing, so man, it's taking this wheat too long. And you go out there and chop it. Let me see if these, oh my God, I just <laughs> uprooted my seed. Guess what? You're not going to get a harvest from that seed. You just uprooted it. You're going to have to start all over again. Now, aren't we tired of starting over again? The harvest comes in perpetual processes. Mm -hmm. If you cut off the process, you got to start all over again. Listen, keep it perpetually going by standing on the Word of God. So here's what you do. You stick and stand with the Word of God, continue to let the seed begin to produce and operate in your life, and you don't stop until you either do one or two things. Jesus Christ come back, you don't need it now, we're going on the glory. Or you die. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you make up your mind, I am, this is, this is when I stop standing. Right. When one of these two things happen, either Christ comes, Christ returns, or I die. Other than that, stand on the word. Stay, continue to believe God for your healing. Continue to believe God for the salvation of your children. Continue to believe God for your prosperity. You don't stop believing and stop standing, stop speaking until, until it manifests or Jesus Christ come back or you give up the ghost. Now, let's go back to our main scripture. We got about four minutes. We might have to do a soil preparation part two. Uh, so I'm not going to rush because I got a lot more I'm going to teach you. I'm telling you, we're going, we going into the year, new year with a new attitude. You're going to, baby, you're going to be walking on water. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to create an image in our hearts that we're not just serving some old mediocre God. Right. We're going to bring back to remembrance, like Gideon said, okay, if God, if God be for us, where is this all, where, all, where be all these miracles? See, that boy had enough since they, <laughs> no, if the God you're talking about is a God of miracles. <laughs> now, I don't know where he at, but... We need to have the God back that works miracles. How many agree with me that we need to have the God back that works miracles? Yes, amen. You know, mm -hmm. because when you got to pay that mortgage and you don't have a job, baby, you need a miracle. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. You need a miracle. Yes, right. It might be time out for the job, but that thing is due. Even if you got a job, it's going to take two to three weeks before they give you a paycheck. You need a miracle. So we are, we are believing God for the miraculous God. And if anybody sit there looking at me saying, this man has lost his mind, then you can't tell me you serve the same God I serve, not Jehovah Jireh, not the I am that I am. See, that's why I say we got to get all of that, that, that uh, mixture out of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Either he's the God that worked miracles or we just going to church being religious. Right. Either he's a God that can cure your diseases, or you just have in church. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we got to make up our mind that we serve the God that's of the miraculous. He told he told Moses when he went down in Pharaoh, he said, show him all, your, all, all the mighty works. He's not going to let you go, not even with a mighty hand after I show you all these mighty works, but I'm going to convince him. He's going to ask for miracles. Pharaoh's going to ask for miracles. The world is asking for miracles. The church is supposed to be in a position to where that plague should not even come near us. Because God said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, seek their face, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, mm -hmm. then I would hear and I would heal the land. The world is in the shape it is in because the church is not in the position that it should be in. These things should not happen. That tornado should not have happened. The devil is wreaking heaven. The, 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 the prince of this world. Is doing these things because the church is not in a position to stop him. When that storm tried to overtake Jesus now, Jesus stood and said, hey, peace be still. Yeah. While the disciples said, carest thou not that we perish? Well, that was Jesus, okay. <laughs> then that's even double jeopardy to us because he says we're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. And he said, he told him, he said, oh, ye of little faith. In other words, he was telling them, I expected you to stop this, this, this thing. I told you about the fig tree. Y'all ain't listening to nothing I'm saying. That's exactly what he was saying in, in, my, in my interpretation. <laughs> well, why would he fuss if they couldn't do it? He says, oh, you're a little faith. Mm -hmm. I told you about the fig tree. I told you about the mountain. Mm -hmm. You weren't listening. When are y'all going to? And when it came to the boy, he says, oh, you faithless generation. How long I got to put up with mm -hmm. this? How long, church? Is God going to be looking to us, the creation is looking to us, the word is looking to us, for the sons of God to be manifested, for us to take, stand up and take our rightful place. But we're so busy 
uh, getting beat up. Sick, broke, poverty, stricken. Who can we help? We barely can help ourselves. That's got to change. And it's going to have to start with the image on the inside of us. We got to stop seeing ourselves as grasshoppers. Stop seeing us as ourselves as people that are begging. Mm-hmm. People are looking for hand out. Oh, help me. See ourselves as little people. The ch- see our, the church, I guarantee you, the, the majority of the church see ourselves as insignificant compared to the world. We Listen, I'm telling you, they, they're painting a picture and we, we're receiving it. When we look at the world, we see what? Uh, prosperity, nice hot cars and houses, all those things. And we see ourselves as, oh, we're just poor little peasants trying to make it into heaven. And we serve a God that sits on streets of gold. Gates are made of pearl. Mm. Something's wrong with that picture. Mm-hmm. The earth is his in the fullness thereof. Yes. And all they that dwell therein. Heaven, even the heavens, belongs to God, but earth has he given to the children of men. And he's commanding us, how long are we going to stand in the seat of the wicked and allow them and not judge the righteous? Mm-hmm. We're going to die as men if we don't stand up and be men of God. And so, what's wrong with that picture? We're letting the world conform us, but we need to be mm-hmm. transformed by the renewing of our mind. Right. We serve a God who is able to deliver from fiery furnaces yes. the God of miraculous. Come on, say this. I serve. I serve the God. The God of the mira- miraculous. Of the miraculous. That's the God we serve. Not a just do God. Not a bear to make any God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a God that if you don't have it, he'll manifest it. Yes. And we got to to get to a place where we're not wavering. Make up your mind. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to believe that God or you're going to believe a God that just helps you to be, Mm -hmm. to be working your own strength. Thank God I got a good job. What are you going to do when you ain't got one? Mm -hmm. Thank God I got health and strength. What are you going to do when you don't have it? Right. You're going to need a miracle. And so why not start out with believing for the God of miracles right now? And mm-hmm. stop questioning everything. Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? <laughs> no patriarch you will find that got anything from God thought like that. What did Mary say? She said, she said well, how is this going to happen seeing I know not a man? He said, the Holy Ghost, be it unto me. That's all. Shh. I believe what you were saying. Because she could have went on and said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. The Holy Ghost going to overshadow me. What, 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 what's, what's the Holy Ghost? And, and, and why would he overshadow me? What's going to happen when he overshadow me? She could have went to all the things that the church goes into with all that third degree making assumptions, assuming. Mm-mm. She says, oh, thank you. Be it unto me. She took the seed of the word. She placed it in her heart. And she says, be it unto me according to your word. What she was saying, my heart is ready. And it is good ground for the word you just saw. And then not only did she do that, that she went and told Elizabeth, oh, that shall be a performance of that thing which is spoken over me. Mm-hmm. Say that with me. What God says, what God says concerning, my life, concerning my life, there shall be, there shall be a performance, a of, performance it of it in Jesus' in name. Jesus and name. We, got to, we got to believe Thank him Lord. to be faithful who promised Thank that he is faithful to Thank perform you, that which he promised. Yes, and we're going to believe that. Jesus. Talking about manifesting a hundredfold, yes. make sure your heart is right and conducive for the word of God that when God planted in your heart, mm-hmm. you produce much fruit. A hundredfold return on the word of God. The word is a seed. Let the word be sown in your heart. I am telling you some things that is causing you not to be an ordinary Christian. The ordinary Christian cannot receive these things. It's too hard for them. A lot of people are backing off of this teaching and going somewhere where they just want to be motivated Mm -hmm. because they can understand that because it's logical. Well, we're Mm -hmm. not talking about a logical God. Now, you tell me logically. We're about to close. Can you tell me logically? how you can put three guys in a fiery furnace that's turned up seven times hot to where it destroy the ones that threw them in and the fire not kindle upon them neither when they come out they smell like smoke. You tell me logically how that's done. Mm-hmm. You tell me logically how it is that they walked on dry land between the Red mm-hmm. Sea. You tell me logically. You can't. Mm-hmm. So 
if you're not worried about figuring that thing out, why are you trying to worry about figuring out how God's going to do it in your life? Mm-hmm. I need some tuition for my children. Believe God. But I don't know how he's going to do it. That ain't your job. Right. Thank you, Lord. When you figure out how he caused fire not to burn people, Jesus. fire on a branch, on a, on a bush, the burning bush, but did not get consumed with fire. When you can logically tell me how to figure, how you figure that out, then I'll tell you how God's going <laughs> to make a way for you. So mm-hmm. why even waste your time? Yeah. Our job is just to do what? Believe. believe. If he said it, believe it, and then expect it. Yes, Lord. I wanted to say some other things. This is what we're going to talk about the next time. Faith is what? Acting on what you believe. So many definitions mm-hmm. for faith, but the, I, I think one of the most powerful definitions of faith is acting on what you believe. Therefore, if you believe what God says in the Word, you will act up on it. First of all, you will speak it because the mm-hmm. Word is not really sown as a seed until it's been spoken. As long as it's in your mouth, mouth it don't mean nothing. Even, even, even bad things. What did Jesus say? It's not what goes into a man, it's what comes out of him that defiles him. Yes. So you either be condemned or just justified or condemned by your words. <clears throat> by what? Your words. It's what comes out of a man. What comes out of a man? His words. And mm-hmm. so it's the words that you say. And so I'm telling you, if, if you're saying the condition more than you're saying the word of God, you got the condition. Why are you angry? Why are you upset? Well, why God won't hear me? Because you're saying the condition. So why blame it on mm-hmm. God? If all you're talking about, oh, I'm sick, I'm hurt, I'm in pain, oh, Lord, I don't know how to make it. And then somebody come around you, the saints come around you, oh, but I believe God by his stripes I'm here. Stop it. Mm -hmm. It's too late. You're going to have that sickness. You're going to have that pain. You're going to have that poverty. Why? Because that's what you quote the most, and that's what you believe, and that's what comes out of your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, out of the good treasures of your heart, the the evil treasures of your heart, those things come out, and you're going to have what you say. The word don't lie. You're going to have what you say. So what are you saying the most? I guarantee you that's what you have. And if you tell me what you have, I'll tell you, you have it because that's what you're saying the most. But when you switch that thing around Mm -hmm. and say that I will let nothing come out of my mouth but the word of God, Watch your situation change. Why? Because it's going to die. It has no life. Don't give life to it. Don't give life to it. Don't speak to it. Don't, don't give it. Don't, don't feed it. Your sickness needs words to feed on. Mm-hmm. Sickness, poverty, it needs words to feed on. Yes. Guess what? The Bible said, listen, I'm telling you, Bible, this is revelation, baby. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, yes. and they that love it shall what? Eat, Eat the fruit thereof. Yeah. So the thing that you're saying that you have, if you keep feeding it with, with the words, death, if you keep feeding with death, it's going to eat it and it's going to keep growing. So guess what? Starve it. Mm-hmm. Starve the sickness. Starve the poverty. Why? By speaking life yes. to the situation. Yes. The word of God is what? Health to all thy flesh. So we're going to do the things concerning the word of God. Now, you can play with it if you want to. I don't believe all that. <laughs> you don't have anything, so you don't have anything to lose. But you got everything to gain. If he says, wait a minute, I serve the God of the mirac- miraculous. Mm-hmm. The devil don't even want me to say that word. But I'm saying miraculous. The miraculous. Yes. We serve the God of the miraculous. miraculous. Yes. And you, watch this here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is a word for somebody. I want to pray. I want to pray before I say this word because you've got to get this. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray right now for a sensitive hearing, faith-filled ear to hear what you're about to say by your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Lord. Prepare their hearts right now in Jesus' name to receive this word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you know the enemy just tried to take that from me? Just that quick while I was praying. Wow. You need to hear this. When it comes concern any situation you have, you are in an opportunity. I'm telling you, the devil tried to take that word from me just that quick. That's why I know it's about to bring, set, set, set somebody free. For every situation that you are in, you are in a position for God to show himself strong. So if you're sick in your body, his eyes are looking for that one door to show himself strong in whose heart is perfect toward him. Whose heart, his heart is prepared and conducive to receive what he's about to do. Mm -hmm. 
make yourself available to receive the moving of God in your life and on your life right now. Whether it's finances, sickness, whatever it may be right now, you are in a position, you might say, well, I don't have any money. Guess what? That's the best place to be. All you need to do is believe what God said concerning his word, release your faith, and believe you receive. Mm -hmm. Now, faith is acting on what you believe. Mm -hmm. So now, if you are in any situation where you believe in God for something, yes. I'm going to pray Thank that God's Jesus. eyes yes. fall upon you and see you as that one who he may show himself strong. But I want yes. you to prepare your heart to be perfect toward him. What, what's perfect? That you receive him, believe that he's who he say he is, that he's a, that he is not a man that should lie, but son of a man that should repent. That he is, that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And you make yourself available, says, God, here I am. Good ground. I need to bring forth fruit. Fruit, God, to, to your glory. Healing, prosperity. And you allow him to manifest those things because he wants to show himself strong. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for all of those who will prepare their hearts, oh God, to be perfect toward you. And to receive this word without wavering, yes. without doubt, without resisting the Holy Ghost. Yes. They say, Lord, here I am. Yes. You want to show yourself strong? I am a very good prime candidate that you can show yourself strong, whether it's healing, whether it's salvation, whether it's prosperity. Here I am, God. I need a miracle. Now, Lord, I yes. ask that Lord. you would set your eyes upon them. Yes, Let your eyes fall upon them, God, and then go forth, God, where your eyes find them, God. And begin to manifest your glory for every need that is need, God. We ask this, God, through prayer and supplication. And we thank you for it with thanksgiving, thanking you that you are going to do it and show yourself strong in the name of Jesus. So, Father, wherever there is a need, Paul said that you will supply all of our need according to your riches and glory. And so, Lord, now manifest yourself in that person's life as your eyes fall upon them. Your eyes meet their eyes eyes to eyes, face to faith, need to need God. You are you, you are in need to show yourself strong. They're in a need, God, for you to show yourself strong. Now, Lord, let those needs come together. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every need be met in Jesus' name concerning those whose hearts are perfect toward you. So I thank you right now for the healing in their bodies that they receive. I thank you, Lord, for the prosperity that they need, God, in yes, Jesus' Lord, mighty Jesus name. Jesus' name. And we give you praise and yes, we give you Lord. glory for it. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. amen. You amen. grab hold to that, you receive and says, hey, I am good ground Thank for God Jesus. to manifest yes. what I need in my life. Amen. And you don't move until it's manifested. Mm -hmm. Some of you right now, when I say faith is acting on what you believe, I'm going to tell you something. There's no way somebody say, you say, I want to go to California. I give you a map to go to California and you, wanna, you end up going down driving to New Orleans. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Your actions should line up with what you believe. So if you believe, your actions should begin to line up with what you believe. Yes, Lord. You should begin to change how you Thank think. You, Jesus. Change what Thank you Lord. do. Change yes, what Lord. you say. Yes. You say you want to be healed, but you ain't changing your mouth. You say you want prosperity, but you won't change your mouth. And if you don't change your mouth, you won't change your image. The way you're going to deal with that image on the inside, you got to change your mouth. And if you begin to change your mouth, meditate and change your mouth, mutter, meditate, mutter, meditate, mutter, meditate, it's going to change the image on the inside, and you're going to see yourself healed, see yourself prosperous. And guess what? When you change that image, that's making your heart conducive for good ground to receive the word of God. I've said enough. I can't stop talking. It's 13 after. Listen. Say some of this here um, for next Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. Might be talking about soil preparation part two, yes. but it's all about manifesting the kingdom of God in your yes. life, manifesting the hundredfold. Mm -hmm. The church is going to have, you're going to have, yes. you're going to have, and it's going to be what? It's going to be mechanical. Mm -hmm. No more hoping and wishing and praying like God is the lottery. Oh, I just hope the Lord heal me. Oh, I just hope the Lord prosper me. No, 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 no. It's going to be in you to think it's strange when God doesn't move on your behalf. When sick to try to get up on you, mm -hmm. oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Don't, you don't belong here. Yes. Go. A poverty. No, all my needs are met. Yes. Baby, we got this bill that come in the mail. Thank you. Let me see. Lord, I thank you right now. Here's a need. I need you to supply it according yes. to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. 
as I've been a faithful tithe and faithful to seeds and sow, God, I thank you that a harvest will come to take care of this here. And you said, if I give, well, God shall be given to me good measure, pressed down, shaking the gun, and running over, shall men give into my bosom. Lord, you said, if I give into the things of the kingdom, God, it'll be counted unto me for my account and my God, which supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Now, I thank you, Lord, that this need is supplied. I thank you that it's not, not, not saying God, God supplied the need. No. Mm -hmm. I thank you that it's supplied because your word is true. Mm -hmm. We love you. Father, bless them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. If any be sick, God, if they will hear my words, believe God, you believe you, Lord, you establish them and believe me as their prophet and firstly as their prophet, they shall prosper. And so I command them to prosper from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet and be healed in Jesus' name. You believe and receive and say it's mine because God said it and he's my healer and I got it. And I'm walking in it. It is manifesting a hundredfold in my life. Somebody say my healing is manifested a hundredfold. My healing is manifested a hundredfold. My prosperity is manifested a hundredfold. My prosperity is manifested Now believe it, don't move off of it. Believe it, don't move off of it. Believe it, don't move off of it. You confess it with your mouth. Continue to say it. I don't care how foolish it may sound, how foolish it may feel. You say it in a way because it's God's word. Because guess what? It's going to feel Foolish to you, sound foolishly because it's in your flesh, don't understand it because mm -hmm. it's an image against God and it don't understand the yes, things of God. Lord. The things Thank of God you, are Jesus. foolishness to it. And so, yeah, you're doing the right thing when you say things, this is the word of God, and you feel foolish. Oh, I don't feel right. Say it in a way because that's when you know it's right. Amen. Because it's spiritual things. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. We love you with all our heart. Yes. I know God's going to prosper you. I'm con yes. I declare and decree testimonies like never before for those that are lay hold to the word and say, hey, the word is working mightily in me. Yes. Amen. Amen. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the effectual fervency of his prayer with passion that evaded much. Get excited. Get ready. Get set. Because we're about to go. I'm here to tell you the word is going to spread. Whatever you need. God's got it. There's some folk down there that just not concerned about they for it no more. If you need help in your house, where the enemy is trying to come in and take over, there's some folk down there, you ain't got to find but one, baby. Just find you one. They will pray effectually and fervently for you, and God will come in and arrest that devil and put him out. I need some soldiers. I need some warriors because this means war.